J.D. Vance attempted to use the English language to communicate with people and it did not go particularly well. He spoke in Atlanta and he said, we need unity, not division. We need unity, not division. And so we shouldn't ever be saying that there is a candidate that is a fascist. The only problem with that is that two days ago, Donald Trump said that Kamala Harris is a fascist. As usual, a very clear disconnect between Donald Trump and his running mate, J.D. Vance. Listen to J.D. here in Atlanta. And I apologize for the audio. I don't know if Antifa or Black Lives Matter was controlling the microphones. That's a joke, by the way. Uh, but the, uh, the the audio problem is on their end, not ours. But I do think that we should take this opportunity to call for a reduction in the ridiculous and inflammatory political rhetoric coming from too many corners of our politics. OK. Go on. Look, we can disagree with one another. We can debate one another. But yeah. We cannot tell the American people that one candidate is a fascist. And if he's elected, it is going to be the end of American democracy. Oh. We cannot as a Per, as a person affiliated with Kamala Harris has said that we need to, quote, eliminate Donald J. Trump. A New York Democratic congressman has said that in the past. Oh, so it wasn't Kamala Harris who said that. Got it. So so J.D. says we can't be saying that the country hinges on who gets elected and we can't be saying that our opponents are fascists. Now, put aside just for a moment that J.D. Vance regularly is now posting grainy videos purporting to be of Haitian immigrants grilling cats and dogs. Put that aside for one second. Here is Donald Trump this weekend in Tucson, Arizona, saying Kamala Harris is, yes, a fascist. I thought we weren't supposed to be doing this, J.D. We must defeat comrade. Kamala Harris, I use that term because you know what that term means, right? Communist. No. She's a Marxist, communist, fascist, socialist. She's not actually a socialist. She's gone past that. Right. J.D., we can't be calling our political opponents fascists. Trump, my opponent is a fascist. And Trump is big on these labels. Here is him using not fascist, but I guess socialist or something in this crypto interview gone wrong. No votes. You know, she got no votes, but she'd be very bad for the country. We have to save our country. We can't play games and we can't have a, a Marxist communist president because that's not what it's all about. So, well, fortunately, there aren't any Marxist communist candidates for Donald Trump. So listen, I mean, J.D. Vance is calling for a reduction in inflammatory political rhetoric. Fine. I mean, on the surface, that seems reasonable. I would agree with that. The problem is that the vast majority of the inflammatory political rhetoric is coming from the guy he's running with. Now, I know they are already doing the they keep trying to kill Trump thing. It's Republicans and former Trump voters that keep trying to kill Trump. We'll get to that. He's asking for restraint from labeling candidates in these ways, fascist or whatever. But He's the running mate of Trump who thrives on that exact rhetoric. When we say Trump doesn't respect democratic institutions and it's not even clear he likes democracy, we defend it by quoting Trump. I would be a dictator on day one. It's OK to suspend parts or all of the Constitution if I determine that that's what we need to do. We are citing sources. When Trump says Kamala is a Marxist, communist, fascist, socialist, which makes no sense, but forget about that for a second. There is no policy that Kamala Harris has ever proposed that falls under the umbrella of Marxism, socialism, fascism or communism. So this isn't really about de-escalating the political rhetoric or whatever. It's that J.D. Vance and MAGA selectively criticize rhetoric that hurts them. It hurts them when we point out, I don't even know that they respect democracy because they tried to steal the 2020 election. If the shoe were on the other foot, I'm sure that J.D. Vance's rhetoric would be completely different. Now, we also don't want to forget that J.D. Vance himself scales up the political rhetoric, saying I have every right to create stories like about black seeding cats, if I want to get the media's attention on that. And he's continuing to put throw conspiracies onto the fire. 
He's pushing a narrative of fear. He's preaching civility, but he's certainly doing the do as I say, not as I do sort of thing. And it's a very uh, uh, noticeable and naked uh, contradiction that's there. Now, what I want to go to next with J.D. Vance and others are doing this, too, is the rhetoric specifically surrounding the failed assassination attempts against Donald Trump. With elections right around the corner and MAGA willing to do anything to secure his win, I can't recommend enough using ground news to stay up to date on debates and other issues that right wing outlets will try to skew or ignore. Our longtime sponsor, Ground News, adds clarity to every news story by putting together a multitude of sources in one place, and you can compare coverage and decide for yourself. Like this story, the DNC is suing the Georgia Election Board over Republican supported rules that allow local election boards to question and withhold election certification, potentially causing chaos after Election Day. The summary of this story on Ground News is based on every article Ground News found reporting on it. And with a simple scroll, you can see how different outlets across the political spectrum are framing the story. Voter suppression is real. And in this case, the perpetrators are elected officials who can be voted out, but only if the public understands the story from every angle. And that's where Ground News comes in. Go to ground.news slash Pacman or scan my QR code for 40 percent off the Vantage plan that I use for unlimited access to all their features. The link is in the description.